guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Kaylee June and I'm a beauty and fashion photographer based in Sydney, Australia. And today we're going to be talking about five essential things you should have when you're starting your photography business. I really wish that I'd come across some information like this when I was first starting my photography business because for me, I pretty much just fumbled my way through the years of trying to set my business up and I really had no idea what I was doing most of the time. So I really hope that some of these tips today in this video will be really helpful for anyone out there who is thinking about starting a photography business or you might already have started your photography business and you just kind of need that little bit more guidance. I really wanted to put a few tips in here today that I think are really essential to kind of kickstarting your business, making sure that things are kind of streamlined and simplified from the start because that was another thing that I didn't do when I first started. So I really hope these tips are helpful for you guys today and let's get into the video. Okay, so number one, some people might say that this is not an essential, but for me personally, I know it definitely has been an essential tool for me and that is Planners. Having planners, especially on your desk, anywhere that you can see them visually is such an essential thing of starting off your photography business. I'm a little bit pedantic when it actually comes to planning in terms of having several planners. So for those of you who don't know, I have done videos on this before and I have, God, I probably have over five planners literally on my desk alone. You can see that there's one behind me. I've got my 2023 year planner and then I also have my to-do list, which I use daily to write down anything else that I need to check off my list for the week. But speaking of weekly, I also have a weekly planner that I kind of use to, I guess, categorize, summarize my week into that planner. And you guessed it, I also have a monthly planner as well. And I use that mainly for content creation and content planning and really to keep on top of that so I can then log it into my weekly and then my daily uh, to-do list planners as well. I also have a goal planner. I mean, <laughs> the, the list really does go on. My goal planner is mainly for picking a couple of goals throughout the year that I really want to be focusing on and using kind of a 90 day time frame to kind of get myself into the groove of meeting those goals, checking in daily essentially to look at what is important for me to achieve in any particular day and how I can kind of make those little steps towards those goals that I want to achieve. And then I also have a creative planner. So this one's a little bit more of a fun one and it's just for me day to day. It's not completely business orientated, but I do use it for my photography business as well. It kind of just gives me a spark of creativity uh, in the day and it actually has a space for you to kind of write down your daily inspiration for each day in the week and I kind of think as a creative that's kind of important that we sort of have those sparks of inspiration or even just something that you can kind of like focus on throughout the day as a creative spark I guess and this particular planner I really really like for that and then last but not least I also have a self-care planner and I think as any business owner will tell you it is really important to make sure that you're taking care of yourself as well as your business because if you're not taking care of yourself then realistically you can't take care of your business as well as you'd probably like to. So I always like to make sure that I'm writing down a couple of things for myself each day that I get to do, whether that's certain types of exercises that I might want to go and do for the day, yoga, going to the gym, or maybe I want to make sure that I have a home cooked meal, or maybe I want to go out for the day, go for a walk, whatever it is, I kind of feel like using that kind of a planner is great for making sure you're taking care of yourself day to day. Now, you do not have to use all of these planners. As I said, I'm a little bit over the top when it comes to planning. I really like that aspect of my business, but utilizing planners will really help you along, especially in the beginning phases of your business to keep on top of things and to really get the ball rolling in terms of what you want to achieve with your business, especially if you're sticking to content creation plans and things like that. As I said, I use a monthly planner for that. And I find that it really, really does help me to keep on top of everything that I need to do. Because as we all know, these days, there are so many different social media sites out there that it is just nearly impossible to keep on top of all of them. But the ones that I do contribute to, I want to make sure that everything is kind of laid out for me every month and I know what I'm going to be doing each day. Okay, so the second thing that you really do need is a tax folder. I can't tell you how much this changed my life. So I'm not gonna be giving any tax advice because I'm not an accountant and I'm not a financial advisor, so I really can't do that. Uh, but I am gonna tell you guys how I organize my tax information because I think this is a really handy thing to have in your business when you're first starting out and it's only you in the business too. It's really important that you do keep on top of your tax stuff 
stuff because wherever you are in the world, more than likely you're going to be having to personally set money aside for your tax as someone running their own business. So I know here in Australia, that's definitely something that we have to do. And I always like to make sure I'm on top of things when it comes to that. So usually in my tax folder, I have anything that I need to claim back on tax for at the end of the financial year. So all of my receipts go in this folder, basically any information or invoices pertaining to certain jobs that I've done and then things that I need to claim back for, they all go in the tax folder, everything into the plastic sleeves that are in there. And I make it really, really uniform and just easy to access. Along with this, I do use accounting software. So I use Xero. I just find that it's really easy for me. I do have quite a lot of clients who are not from Australia as well. So I do find that using Xero in this way kind of helps me to manage different currencies and things like that within my business because that can get really tricky as well. There's so many different types of software out there though for accounting and it really depends on what you like to use and what your budget is in terms of, of utilizing that. But I would say I really wish I got onto that sort of thing earlier on in my business because I used to when I was just starting out. And to be fair, I couldn't really afford a lot at this point in my career, but I would just kind of write everything down or I'd keep everything in an Excel document. And that definitely works. And I feel like it did for me for the first couple of years, especially when I wasn't earning as much and I wasn't having to uh, get so across everything. But as things became more complicated, I definitely found that using the accounting software and my tax folder combined definitely helped with that. So I can only really tell you guys what has worked for me and that is what's worked for me in the end. But if you can't afford accounting software or anything like that, then the next best option really is, I guess, an Excel spreadsheet online, which you can just use through uh, Google Sheets. And that's basically like a free version that you can use similar to Excel online. But as I said, tax folder, very important. At the bare minimum, make sure that you have a tax folder just so you can chuck all of your receipts in there and everything's organized. I find that that's definitely the best way to go. The third thing you need for your photography business when you're first starting out is a really good workflow slash foldering system. Now, when I'm talking about this, I mean on your computer, you need to have a really good foldering system of how all your images are getting spread across, whether it's separated into folders for clients, whether it's separated into folders for personal work, years, dates, any way you like to organize your files, make sure that it just is at the beginning of your photography business, because as you go along, as you get more clients, things can get very, very confusing when you're trying to look for images, especially if you're trying to license images, for example, and you need to go back and find images from a certain date that might've been five years ago, it's really, really easy to do this if you've got a really good foldering system from the start. Really good workflow as well. Make sure that your PSDs or your working files are kind of separated to your JPEGs. I always like to make sure I've got my PSD files saved because quite often I've had to go back to PSD files from like five or six years ago and go back and actually work on the photo more or edit it further or make adjustments to potentially license to another client, for example example. So definitely make sure that from the start, all of that is kind of organized. Your future self will definitely thank you for it. And number four is a quiet space to work in. Now, I know that this can be a very difficult thing for a lot of people out there and you might not have access to a really quiet space so easily. Uh, I was very lucky, I guess, from the time that I started working as a photographer, I was basically a teenager. So I lived at my mum and dad's place. I mean, you could say lucky, but there were definitely times where it was difficult um, when everyone was home and we didn't have a very big house. So it was kind of hard to get that quiet space. I think these days, if I had to redo that part of my life a little bit more, I'd probably look into hired workspaces. So quite a lot of the time you can hire a desk at shared workspaces these days. And it's a really cool initiative that has really popped up more and more over the last decade. And it wasn't really something admittedly that was around when I was first starting out, but these days it is a really prominent thing within the industry and especially for freelancers and artists to go and work in these spaces, especially if you live near a city, this becomes a lot more easier to achieve and to actually go and hire out. But it's definitely something that I would recommend. If you can't utilize a shared workspace or you don't really have the budget to do so, uh, going to your local library might be a really good place to start if you don't have a quiet space at home that you can kind of work in. Even going to a cafe around midday or something, if you've got the luxury to do that, going to some of these places can really help you become a little bit more focused in what you're doing, especially if you've got a very noisy home life and it's very difficult to uh, get a space in your place where maybe you do have a little bit of quiet for a while. I know that that's something that definitely helped as I got older when I was working in quieter spaces, I could find my focus a lot better. And I think especially when you're starting a business, any business for that matter, it's really important to have that outlet from time to time. And the fifth thing that I feel is essential for your photography business is a backup system. 
And I cannot say this enough, using a good backup system could literally save your business one day. And I do not say this lightly. I have seen people who have lost wedding photos and I have seen people who have recovered from it, but I've also seen people who have not recovered from this. And it doesn't have to be wedding photos. It could be client photos of any caliber. And if you lose those photos and you are not able to recover them, you could be out thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars from your business. So I can't stress enough that it is so important that you are making making sure that you have several backups of your images, particularly if they're client images and you really can't afford to lose them. So really a great way to do this is by having several hard drives that you back up to. I like to have another option with using cloud storage as well, because it's just so easily accessible from any computer or any screen. And I do think that it's kind of like that extra layer of safety when it comes to backing up your images. So there's lots of different ways that you can organize this, but just make sure no matter what, from the bare minimum, make sure that you've got a couple of hard drives when you're first starting your business that you start doing your backups too, because the sooner you start that routine of doing that and that process of doing that, the sooner you'll get so used to doing it and it will become a second nature thing and you won't even think about it. Uh, but make sure you start this process from the beginning and ensure that this doesn't get missed earlier on. I know it can be a very busy time when you're starting your photography business and sometimes things like this, you just kind of push to the side. You can't be bothered. You just want to work on the images, but make sure that you are creating backups from the beginning. Once again, your future self will very much thank you for it. All right, guys. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video today. I feel like some of these tips are really relevant for any business that you may be starting, but especially for photographers. I think some of those points that I mentioned were definitely specific to photographers. So please try and keep them in mind, especially the hard drive one, if you are starting your photography business now. It's really good to get into the routine of doing some of these things and practicing this from the beginning because it's only gonna get easier and more second nature as you go along with your photography business. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please let me know down in the comments section below what your essentials are for starting a photography business. I'd really love to hear. If you do have any requests for videos on my channel, please let me know in the comments section below as well. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.